So what I'd like to see if we can't figure out is can we deduce the three laws of Kepler knowing what we know about New Newtonian uh, mechanics. But we have a problem. When we did circular motion, we didn't allow the radius to change, right? We just used omega squared r. That was the acceleration towards the center, but it had to be going around a circle uniformly. But now it's not going around a circle uniformly. We have to, yeah, oh crud, right. So we have to go back a little bit and remind ourselves about unit vectors in polar coordinates. So let me just say, here's x and here's y. There's a point, and, and these are the polar coordinates that we're going to use. And we defined before a unit vector in the radial direction to be a, a vector of length 1 that points in the direction you would go if you increased r but held theta fixed. So that's r hat if that has length one. And using the Cartesian representation, I could say that r hat is equal to x hat times the component in the x direction, which is going to be cosine of theta, plus y hat times the y component, which is going to be sine theta. It has unit length, so I got the lengths right because cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So what, as the planet moves around, what's going to change r hat? r hat should be a function of, is it going to change with time? Yeah, but only because the angle is changing, only because the position theta. So we're going to need to know what happens to r hat when we change the angle theta. But that's not so tough. So the Cartesian unit vectors don't move. That's still x hat. That's a constant. But the derivative of cosine is minus sine. And the derivative of sine is cosine theta. So what direction is that? So let's see. Maybe it's easiest if I pretend that theta went to 0. If I pretend theta was 0, then it has no x component, and its y component is straight up. So if we were over here, that would be this way. Or I could pick maybe theta is 90 degrees. If theta is 90 degrees, sine theta is 1. So it's minus x hat and nothing in the y. So minus x hat would be over here. It's going to point that way. And all along, that vector points just like this. It's perpendicular. How do I know that it's perpendicular to r hat? What's a quick check? Yeah, do you see that the dot product is 0? So the dot product between this vector and that one is minus sine theta, cosine theta, plus sine theta, yeah, 0. OK, so they're perpendicular. It's also got unit length, and it points that way. And that is, in fact, the unit vector that you would get if you held r fixed and you increased the angle theta. Are we in agreement? I think we did this before, right? In a previous life? In a previous life. In a previous life, OK. Well, while we're at it, we got to do it again. So d theta hat d theta, what is that? Well, I can turn the crank again. x hat and then minus cosine and y hat 
and oops, minus sign. That's supposed to look familiar, although I'm probably hiding. Yeah, that looks a whole boatload like minus r hat. I just took the derivative of this. This thing here, I argued there, is theta hat. OK? That vector, which has components minus sine theta, sorry, in the x direction, it's, it's going back to the left. The minus sine makes me happy. But it would go to 0 if I let theta come down. And the y component is large and positive and then tending smaller. So the derivative of a radial unit vector is the tangential unit vector. The derivative of the tangential unit vector here looks like just minus the radial unit vector. And you can probably figure out the pattern. What if we were to take the derivative of that? <laughs> it's going to be just 90 negative. degrees each time, right? It's just going to rotate around 90 degrees for every derivative. OK? So I needed that. Why do I need that? Because in order to apply Newtonian mechanics, I need the acceleration. And I want to use polar coordinates because they really make much more sense for this problem so that I have an easy time expressing the distance to the planet from the sun. OK, so I need the acceleration in polar coordinates. So I guess I'm going to build it up step at a time. Let me start with v. v is the derivative of the position vector with respect to time. Then if I can do that, I take another time derivative, I'm going to get the acceleration. How do I have to write the position vector in polar coordinates? So I can write down d by dt. OK, I have to move how far away in the radial direction to get to the point? Well, that's what I called r. So I need r in the radial direction. And once I've moved r in the radial direction, there I am. I'm at the planet. I don't have to move anymore. I don't have to move in a perpendicular direction in order to get to the planet. So let me make sure that that makes sense. So here's the planet. When the angle is theta, a unit vector in the r hat direction is to go out in the direction of the planet. How far do I have to go? r. Done. Pirates, yes, thanks. OK, we're going to ha definitely have to do pirates after the break. Um, OK, so now, unlike with the Cartesian unit vectors, the radial unit vector does depend. We already figured that out. It depends on angle. So if you're going to be moving around and changing your angle, I can't just ignore the time derivative here. So I have to use the product rule and the chain rule. So I'm going to get dr dt by the product rule. That's in the r hat direction. That one's straight ahead. And then I need to use the chain rule and say that the only thing that changes r hat is if theta changes. But I'm really differentiating with respect to time, so that has to be multiplied by the derivative of the angle theta with respect to time. So are we together on that? And up there, we worked out that this derivative of the radial unit vector with respect to the angle is just the um, the tangential unit vector. And so I have r dot 
in the radial direction plus r theta dot in the tangential direction. Now, let's pause. Does that make sense to people? Does that expression, is that what you could have maybe anticipated if you just thought hard about how would you express the velocity in polar coordinates? What's the first term trying to tell us? Yeah, how fast are you moving in the radial direction, radially outward? And what's the other term? That's r times theta dot would be the rate at which you're effectively going around a circle of radius r. So that's in the tangential direction. So this is v sub r in the radial direction plus v sub theta in the theta hat direction or in the azimuthal or the tangential direction. All terms for the same. No? It's not tangential direction. Not tangent to the ellipse. Is that what you mean? Yes. It's not tangential to the ellipse. I don't have any ellipse as far as deriving this in, in polar coordinates yet. But it is in the theta hat direction as defined that way. OK, so now I need to calculate the acceleration. So I can apply Newton's laws. So now I'm cordially invited to differentiate a more complicated beast, r dot r hat plus r theta dot theta hat. But we know how to do each one of these. It's just, how many terms are we going to get? Hi. Five, right? We have a triple product and a double product. So we're going to get five terms. OK, so here we go. We may need two lines. OK, the first one's easy. I get another dot on my R hat. Then I get plus R dot. And then I have to use the chain rule again. So I get d R hat d theta times theta dot. That takes care of the first two, the first pair. Now I have to add, say again, this one. Um, it, it's d theta dt, so if you want, I'll write it that way. Well, that's later. Plus, OK, another r dot times theta dot times theta hat. That's if the derivative hits this term. Next, if the derivative hits theta, I have r theta dot dot theta hat. And lastly, the derivative could hit the unit vector in the theta direction. And I now have to take d theta hat d theta times d theta dt. Just barely make it. But wait a sec. Yeah, yeah. We figured out d theta hat d theta is minus r hat. This term here is minus a unit vector in the radial direction. So radially inward. So I have two terms here and here that point in the radial direction. And I have three terms that point in the theta hat direction. So let me group these together. So the acceleration in the radial direction is r double dot minus r theta dot squared. Because I got one theta dot here, and I have another theta dot there. So that's this term. Two of these 
This one here, this is the same thing as theta dot. So this term and that term are the same since this guy is theta hat. So I got two of those, 2r dot theta dot. And the last one is r theta double dot. Wow, OK. So that was a lot, even though we're just getting warmed up. So does this touch base with what we did before? Certainly lurking in here has to be uniform circular motion, right? <laughs> so is it? Funny. So if, if we're going around a circle at constant angular velocity, the radius isn't changing. So this second derivative is definitely zero. We have minus r theta dot squared in the radial direction. Oh, wait, that's just our r omega squared term, right? That's r omega squared in the negative radial direction. It points towards the center. The acceleration is towards the center. And let's see, this term, well, r isn't changing, so that's dead. And what about this term? Yeah, if it's uniform, then the angular velocity isn't changing, so the time derivative of the angular velocity is zero. So sure enough, uniform circular motion is in there, but we have an extra term in the radial direction that we didn't have before and that we need in order to account for the planetary motion. Okay, are we going to need this term for a planet? Are we going to need the theta hat term to describe the motion of the planet? I don't think so because, well, let's see. So we're going to apply F is equal to MA. And hopefully on my drawing up there. So if the planet is there, the direction of the force on the planet is just towards the sun in the negative r hat direction. So minus g m m over r squared in the radial direction is equal to m times this mass. Right? But notice, on the left-hand side, I got no theta hats, right? Over here, I only have a radial acceleration, no acceleration in the theta direction. So I only need I only need that term. Okay, so let me rewrite just slightly. We have R double dot minus R theta dot squared is equal to minus gm over r squared. That's the equation that Newton's laws tell us we have to solve if we're going to describe planetary motion. And we're going to try to be brave enough and see if we can solve it. 